Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Supergirl Season 5, Episode 11. And today we're solely going to be talking about William and Kara. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. I'm joking, obviously. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So obviously joking about that, we're going to be reviewing Supergirl Season 5, Episode 11. This is the episode where we see the return of Windshot. We have obviously all the other stuff happening, but I think Win is the biggest thing of this episode because it's so heavily centered. There is a normal version of Win, then there's a Win from another Earth who is Toy Man. And so yeah, this episode was titled Back From The Future. We're going to talk about all of this and sort of just freak out over it. But at the same time, like I mentioned at the start of the video, we're going to talk about this thing that they are setting up for the next episode specifically. And obviously there are theories going around. I have my opinions, you probably have your opinions because you guys know that around here we're big mon fans and fans of Caramel. I think most of you who watch these videos are fans of that. But I know there are some people who watch who are like Supercorp fans and other fans of other stuff like with James and I don't know. So I feel like most of us are going to be in agreement of this. However, I can totally see that some people might be like shipping them already and stuff like that. But you know, it's all good. But I'm just going to say my opinion later in this video as to specifically that because I feel like a lot of you guys probably want to hear my thoughts on that. So yeah, I thought I would just tease that and we'll get to that towards the end. But the big thing, Win returns, and we see him return with a mini Legion ship, and I thought that was a very nice touch. I sort of smiled at the screen when that happened because it was just such a nice callback to obviously how he left, because he left on the ship and he returns on the ship, and then he came back, and as soon as he came back in this new superhero suit, I literally sort of just dropped my shit, and I was like, holy shit, Win is back. So, yeah, I'm so excited. I love this episode. I think it's down to Win really, and you know, so Win, he's told everything, everything he missed, and there's this fantastic scene where he's throwing up, and it's absolutely priceless seeing his reaction to all of this and catching him up, because you know, he hasn't been here since the end of season 3, it's been a while, and it was just such a great moment with the team, and it sort of reminded me how good Win is, and, you know, the environment and the sort of energy that he brings, that Jeremy brings, I think he's just so good and he's the perfect fit for our cast, and I think he makes everyone better when he's around. And there was some sort of energy that has been missing recently, and I felt like that energy from those previous seasons was brought back in this episode, so that's why I'm excited for the next few episodes when we've still got Win around, and I have to talk about some of the interactions with Win. like seriously, the stuff with Alex is absolutely priceless. They didn't lose any of that, I was worried that they were going to lose, you know, their chemistry, their connection that they've had in the past few seasons, you know, from season 1 to the end of season 3, what they had was fantastic, because you have this sort of playful nature between these friends, and I just really thought that, especially the scene with Alex and him, when she was like, hey, no pushing or something like that, I just thought it was so good, and obviously we had Kara and Wynn, their back and forth nature, the chemistry is insane, same with Kyla and Jeremy, but same obviously for Melissa and Jeremy, and also we have to talk about Jean, him coming back, so David's relationship with Jeremy, again, I think those three work so well with Wynn, just individually or all together, there is some sort of energy that is just brilliant, and I live for it. Anyway, we also get the sort of reference to Nia's future relative, Nira Now, who has been mentioned in the past. She's a legionnaire and is one of Wynn's best friends in his version of the future. And so this is with Nia meeting Wynn. That was a nice moment. We have Wynn getting dream abilities. He shows Nia what he can do. Nia sort of learns a bit off of him. And so it's based on Nia's powers in the future due to his legion ring. He sort of needed some sort of powers if he's going to go out in the field, and he very much so is a field agent now, more than just, you know, being the brainiac of the team, sort of just helping out. And additionally, we get the big revelation that he's married in the future, he has a wife, we see her, you know, she's not any specific comic book character, but she's just a character that exists in the future. Also, he has a daughter, and he was going to call his daughter Kara, and I just thought that was so cute, and I thought it was just perfect. And apparently a lot of people in the future are named after Kara Zorel, so that is cool, people obviously know in the future, this is a big revelation, that they know that Kara is actually Supergirl. I don't know if in present day they specifically know that Kara Zorel is Supergirl, maybe they do, maybe they don't, but they definitely don't know Kara Danvers is Supergirl, you guys correct me on that because I could be totally wrong about that. Anyway, so we have 
win and he's just so good i just wrote in my notes he is so fucking good that's what i wrote i wrote jeremy is so fucking good and that's pretty much sums it up if you ask me and then we get the big revelation sort of to do with toy men and all the stuff that happens that wins in danger and his family's in danger if he doesn't save this guy because there is some sort of repercussion that the like time police i think he calls them they come and try and you know arrest him because it's a different version of him but their dna matches up and you know he would be arrested and taken away basically in the future so that's why he came back to save his future and so obviously we've got toy man I loved that Jeremy played these two very different versions of himself and he really got to sort of express how much of a good actor he is and I thought Toy Man was great in this episode, he goes absolutely crazy and I really liked the sort of fight towards the end of the episode where they played Eye of the Tiger, I thought that was kind of cool seeing, you know, Wynn fighting with everyone and Nia learning from him and, you know, the Super Friends are there, we get a Super Friends reference in this episode as well, lots of references that we'll get to in a second. But also, I liked the Win versus Toy Man face-to-face -face showdown towards the end, and Toy Man kills himself by blowing up this university, and he essentially only ends up killing himself, and that's about it. And so, the references in this episode that were great was, obviously, we got the new headquarters instead of the DEO because, you know, Lex has taken over, and I think that's a good change that we needed, and so I'm looking forward to that. John has called it the Tower. I don't know why he called it the Tower, because it's not a tower unless they didn't show it's a tower but obviously the references to the tower that the justice league get in the comics and in you know the animated shows and animated films and stuff but i don't know why it's called the tower but i kind of did freak out over it i'm not gonna lie because it's cool and anyway so we get the signs of each character on the wall from the justice league you know the flash black lightning Martian Manhunter, he was actually in his suit in this episode, which was interesting, but he wasn't in much because David Harewood actually directed this episode, so yeah, I think he did a very good job directing it, but anyway, so you have those plaques on the wall, the Justice League members, and yeah, it's just cool, and basically, we also get this reference to the Hall of Justice, you know, the headquarters that they set up in Crisis in the future, Wynn says it's called the Hall of Justice, so amazing reference right there moving on we have a little bit of the episode towards like the middle where they have sort of their own commentary on internet activity and trolling and i liked that it wasn't in much of the episode because always when tv shows or films trying to do it most of the time they're not very successful because you know they talk about like oh i'm gonna get one million followers in an hour that is practically impossible literally if you think about it it's so impossible in it kind of pissed me off in you know films or like tv shows when they show viral videos and they sort of just tick up and down it's like goes from one view to like a million views in like five seconds and you know that annoys me because it's not real and i feel like they did a good amount of that in this episode where they didn't show the silly sort of social media stuff that they sometimes do in films and tv shows so i thought it was fine but obviously the 1 million followers, I don't know, like getting a viral video in a few hours, yeah that's possible, but the 1 million followers, I'm like, eh, I don't know. But that's just such a small thing of the story, so that wasn't such a big problem in my opinion, but yeah, you can overlook that. And also in this episode you've got Brain, he's been extremely moody, and the one thing that I realised this episode, and I've said this a few times, I like Brainy, he's good, but he's nothing too interesting, and I really thought that... With Wynn coming back, obviously we make the comparison between the two characters because one replaced the other. I think you can really see that Brainy is a little bit boring. I think he's interesting when he's with Nia, but when he's by himself or just doing his other stuff, he's a bit boring and he's not that interesting right now. He could obviously be more interesting. Like last episode, he was actually interesting, but it was so much about the Brainiac sort of family. But having Wynn back, I think you can really see how good Wynn is and how you know, kind of a little bit underwhelming Brainy is compared to Wynn, because I don't think he's as good as Jeremy Jordan. Like, Jeremy Jordan freaking kills it in this episode, doing these two characters. And maybe it's just a convincing factor. I didn't really buy Brainy being moody this whole episode. It felt like he was acting. So, I don't know. I sort of flip up and down on Brainy, because I thought he was very good last episode. I thought Jesse did a good job, but in this episode, not so much. Maybe that's just because Jeremy's that good. I don't know. But anyway... I think Brainy could actually go back to the future right now because they actually referenced why Wynn was sent to the future. And I'm pretty sure the gist I got was that they actually defeated his relative Brainiac 
you know, the green version, the original version in the future. So, yeah, I think they're just keeping him around for the sake of it, you know, because he's a established character now. So, but yeah, if it was reality, he could go back to the future now, but he obviously likes it here because he's got, you know, new sort of family and stuff. And anyway, so we got Lex with Lena in this episode. He gets information about Leviathan and the future and then obviously he goes to the Legion ship. He actually shares this information with Lena and Lena is trying to do her Q-Wave thing again like she's been doing all season. Again, not very interested in that aspect of the story because I feel like she's been doing it this whole season. So I do have some quarrels with this episode but it's not big ones because I love the wind stuff so damn much with Kara, with Alex, with Jean and stuff like that. But also we need to talk about this. So the thing I teased at the start of the video, we need to talk about Kara and William because if you've seen the trailer for next week's episode, which will break down either later tonight or tomorrow, basically they're going to go on a date, William and Kara, and William asks her out and yeah, so I'm not buying this. And I know you guys can disagree or you can agree, it's up to you, but there is no chemistry. Since when, this whole season, have you ever bought there's any chemistry between the two of them? They're good actors, Melissa's one of my favourite actors ever, but I don't buy that relationship between them because they hated their guts, and I haven't felt any intimacy or chemistry since they have become sort of friends, and now he's invited to game night and stuff like that. I like William, I think William's fine, but I just don't see any connection between them right now, and I feel like they're doing it for the sake of giving Kara a relationship, and... I feel like if they actually do go on this date, which I'm pretty sure they do from the trailer, I think if we see the return of mon in the 100th episode, I think it's going to be a thing where, oh, you can't get back together with mon even if you see mon because, you know, you're with William now or you're going out with William. So I feel like that's the gimmick they're using to maybe when they bring back mon If they do, obviously we don't know right now, but as far as we know, we're pretty sure he's going to return in the 100th episode in two episodes time and it's pretty much bang on the point when this sort of new relationship has been started, so I think that might be an excuse. It feels like they're trying to get Kara in a relationship just for the sake of it. We've been theorising about this for, you know, the longest time since William was first introduced to the show because that was sort of what he was introduced as, this sort of reporter that sort of has this status as, oh, he's from England. Oh, he's worked at this prestigious news company, and now he's coming here. So, like I said, we've been theorizing about this since the summer, and it was very obvious that they were going to try and do this. It was only inevitable to when they were going to do it, but I don't buy it. I don't see the chemistry, to be honest. Maybe you guys do, but from the comments I've seen online, no one's really buying it. Obviously, there's probably a few people that do. However, you know, let's see. I just hope it doesn't feel forced and... I hope it doesn't go through, if I'm honest. I'm sorry, Kara. We love you, but I don't buy it. And a lot of people don't buy it. So maybe this is the showrun that's trying to put it in. But anyway, so we have this game night towards the end. Wins there. It's great. I actually did like William in this scene, and it was just a cool scene, if I'm honest. And so the ending, we get this teaser that maybe Toy Man is alive in this computer, and that's the way we end off this episode. So that's about it for this video. Obviously, I've done a bit of ranting here and there, but also, I love this episode. I have to mention that, even though I did have a few little quarrels, but I love the episode. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys later for my trailer breakdown. Should be out either later tonight or tomorrow, so yeah, see you guys then. Goodbye. I see red.